Hello everybody, my name is Tyler Lay. I'm a professor at Oklahoma State University and uh, thank you for joining us for Hydration Theater. What this is is, a, uh, is an event I do every year to try to get my students involved, to help them learn more about, uh, about uh, 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 hydration of uh, cement with water. Uh, so let me give you a couple of why are we doing this. Uh, first of all, people learn in different ways. Some people are auditory learners, some people are visual learners, and some people just really have to, have to be experienced something, have to ha get their hands on it. And this is where I'm trying to bring the experience to the students, trying to make them learn in, in new ways, to kind of touch everyone. Um, I have a first, I have a short disclaimer up front. This is a version of the story, you know, like as all stories, uh, we, is where what actually happened and then there's the kind of the way you tell the story. I've tried to make this as technically accurate as I can. I've likely left out some small details that, I, that, uh, that, that may or may not be important. The idea is this is to be fun and this is to help people learn and learn about the main ideas about uh, cement hydration. Um, and it's also meant to be followed along with the attached sheets. I have the attached sheet right here, which hopefully you'll have access to while you're watching this, where we show how the ions change with time um, in, in uh, solution, basically calcium and silica. We talk about the uh, different stages of hydration and, and how they change with time, the uh, rate of heat release that occurs with time, and then some nice cartoons that shows what's happening on the surface of the cement grain itself. Hopefully you won't need those is because you will be with us experiencing hydration firsthand. Um, so there we go. Uh, the, the people that we'll be talking with, that, that my students will be the molecules, will be acting out the hydration, but we also have some global view, kind of a multi-scale view of what's going on. I'm showing this little Easter egg as a cement grain. Um, we'll be using some other props too to show kind of a global idea. So you'll be kind of seeing what's happening uh, on a micro, nano, super small level, then you'll be seeing, seeing it, what's happened on a micro scale level as well. Kind of interesting. Um, first thing is, is I'm going to talk about the cement hydration itself. We're going to be mainly focusing on C3S hydration, uh, which is alite. It is uh, uh, the primary agent we're going to be talking about. We're going to be talking about, um, uh, we're not going to be talking much about C2S hydration, which is B-lite. It's not as major player early on, not as significant, but is one of the phases that's in, um, in cement. We're not going to be talking much about C4AF, which is iron, another, major, uh, another minor phase, but, but doesn't really play a major role in early age hydration. Um, we will be talking about C3A, which is illuminate, and, and what it's all about, and gypsum as well, the thing we add to, to, uh, to help us with set in our, in our hydration process. That will be part of our story. So first of all, I, I believe we're ready to go. I, I, um, I want to bring in our timekeeper, Father Time, Sid, um, Sid Patel here, will be showing us with the different phases, helping us count down. We're starting in phase zero. If you're on your chart following along, we are in state phase zero. We're in the very first seconds of hydration. Please, cement grain. Anika, come on in here and have a seat. Anika will be sitting in the in the in this the throne here, the seat of honor, and uh, she will be a constant throughout the hydration. She will be changing what we're talking about. We're mainly going to be talking about C3S hydration, but we will be talking a little bit about C3A hydration and gypsum. We'll get to that. Um, so we have our cement grain. We have our scale. We're at time zero. We're at zero. We, have, we haven't done anything yet. And then all of a sudden the very first step in, in hydration is mixing, right? You get the water, you add it to the cement, you start mixing it up. Water molecules, come on in. Water, come on in. The water, the water's like a horde tearing at the cement grain. Tearing, tearing, freeing ions, freeing calcium ions, freeing silica ions. They're going into solution, going everywhere. Calcium ions, silica, oh, there's the water. Okay, water, thank you so much. The water is still there, but we're gonna move them out of the way so we can see what's going on. The water came in, they tore off free calcium ions. They tore off silica ions, sent things, thing, these things flying off into solution. They're building, building, the levels are getting higher and higher and higher. We're at picoseconds like that now. This isn't even a true second. This is, this is hydrolysis, what happens very early on. Also water molecules, okay, my, my two water molecules, come on, my, my regulars come walking in. They come, we free the ions, they come working up. Now instead of C3S, we're changing, we're gonna change to C3A. The C3A, the, the gypsum, Add with the water to form some etchonite. Etchonite, please, come in, come in. Our etchonite is formed. It's actually born water molecules. Thank you so much for leaving. 
Thank you. They are actually consumed an etronite. This is not the etronite we usually think about. These are not the needle-like crystals. This actually might not be exactly right. This is etronite in solution. We don't really know what it is, but it's in solution. And it's kind of swimming around, kind of flowing around. And we're going to have it flow kind of off to the side as it's here from now in, until some point in the future. Etronite crystals, please flow this way. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. I appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. I, I appreciate that very much. So we, we have these etronite stuff that's formed in solution. We're still at time zero. And then ions build and build and build, get higher and higher and higher levels. And then all of a sudden, all of a sudden, we start to change from time zero, from stage zero to stage one. Thank you so much, Sid. Please change, change to stage one. Great. Stage one comes in. Our, our water molecules, when they're in here, they freed all these ions. Some early age CSH. Please, please come walking in here. Our early age CSH from the free ions, we're done with the C3A, and we are now moving on to talking about C3S for the rest of what we're talking about. Sometime at the beginning of stage one, people really don't know exactly what happens. We just know a lot of these ions go into solution, then all of a sudden they start reacting. We start some for forming some early age reaction products right on the surface of our cement grain. They actually help protect the cement grain from right on the surface. So when my water molecules start to come in here, come on water molecules, come back in, come back in, thank you so much. They try to get in, they don't let them, they don't let them, they, they, they hold them out. And you'll see this shown on your sheet. You'll see the rate of reaction, the rate of heat given off, actually goes from a very high level starting at the beginning of stage one and gets lower and lower and lower with time. There are a few water molecules that make it through. There are a few that make it through. And once they do, they get in and they form a little bit of CSH, but it doesn't happen very regularly. It's likely this CSH is a very, very dense microstructure, very hard to water get in. Thank you, water molecules. Go on out. I appreciate it. So we're in stage one. We're, we're slowing down. Our cement grain is changing. Remember, we started with an egg. We started with an Easter egg. That's what, we, what, what I, analogy I used if we were looking at it on a global sense. And now it, the surface has changed. It's no longer smooth. It's now it gets a little fuzzy. It's got something on it. We can't, it's, it's a lot tougher for the water to get into the actual cement grain and, and cause a reaction to occur. Very interesting. Let's see. We've got our early CSH protecting our cement grain. Our heat release goes down. Um, a few make it through. We're still, our, our ions are going up and up in solution. We get more calcium ions going up, more calcium ions going up. The silica is being consumed initially right with the CSH reaction and uh, very little heat's given off. And this begins our induction period. This is when we go from stage one to stage two. Thank you very much, Sid. So we've got some etronite floating in solution. We've got some early age CSH on the surface. We've got our C3S particle there, still trying to be reacted. Some reactions happening, just not happening at a very, very, very fast rate. And this is stage two that you see. It's kind of boring. Not much happens. Very important stage, though, because we want to place this concrete. We want, it, we want it to give us some time to get it to the job site, get it in the forms and molds that we want it to. So see, the calcium ions keep building. They get higher and higher and higher. They get to super saturated levels. We really don't know what happens here. There, there's, there may be some kind of surface charge change. There may be some kind of uh, some other chemical reaction that occurs. We do know that calcium hydroxide forms. Calcium hydroxide comes out of solution. Calcium hydroxide, please. Come up here, comes out of solution and changes the CSH particles. Boom. Breaks them down. All of a sudden, the water comes running back in. Water comes on back in. Water comes running back in. All of a sudden, we have ended stage with the beginning of stage three. Stage three, please. Thank you so much. This is kind of the beginning of stage three. And, and we have massive reaction. We have massive heat giving off. I want you to look at stage three. We have heat going up and up and up. We have tons of water molecules coming in. More ions going in solution. More CSH being formed. Thank you so much, water molecules. Come on up. CSH, other CSH. Come on in here, please. Thank you so much. And uh, we have some more CSH particles being formed around the surface. More dense. We have some calcium hydroxide on the outside. Very interesting. Kind of all this is happening at once. Very, very active part. Start of stage three. And then right about midpoint of stage three, our etronite crystals, please flow back in here. Our etronite, again, they're in solution right now. They're floating, they're floating, they're in solution. People really don't know what, what occurs. Then all of a sudden, they attach to the surface of the CSH. They absorb water. And what do they do? Zing. They extend, ladies and gentlemen. They extend. And when that happens, we have changed from little tennis balls. And now a, a decent representation of our system are some Christmas bows. Two Christmas bows together. These etronite needles sticking across on another. And this is the initial set. 
when the needles of these etronite crystals start to interact with one another, there is kind of some initial strength gain. So this occurs, we have our etronite on our surface, we still have some water molecules trying to come in here. Water molecules try to sneak in here, they come running in, they come running in. They, it's tough for them to get in now. It's much harder for them to get in. It's almost like a maze, like a very complicated maze that they must maneuver to find their way inside. But they finally do, they finally get in there, come on, come on in there, they get in there, thank you so much. Great, more calcium goes into solution, more silica, they form the CSH, thank you water molecules, I appreciate it. Um, they, 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 uh, they form more CSH on the surface and eventually, this keeps happening, keeps happening. This is getting, beginning now stage four, thank you so much. Our reaction becomes diffusion controlled. That's what I was talking about. It starts to get harder and harder and harder for these water molecules to get in. Our rate of reaction starts to go down, get lower and lower and lower, and it gets to a point where we get to stage five. Now, we still get CSH formation during this time. We're still densifying our, 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 our uh, microstructure. Stage five begins, thank you so much, and now we have almost no rate of reaction. Almost none, because what happens at this point is that these, this structure is so dense and so hard to get in that if a water molecule, if a water molecule, and I'm a water molecule, if a water molecule wanted to get in, they really wanted to get, they try, they jump, and oh my gosh, they can't. No, oh, that one didn't work out. I'm gonna try this way. Okay, over here, oh, oh didn't, no, oh, that, that hurt. No, anyway, so I got it, I, I couldn't make it. I couldn't make it, because it's a diffusion controlled reaction. I, I, I just cannot make it in. Eventually, if I'm really sneaky, I'll get in there and I'll keep working and I'll keep working and I'll finally make it to the middle. I will form CSH and I will continue the hydration process. This keeps continuing, this keeps continuing. We change now. We're no longer Christmas bows. Our Christmas bows, we get more and more hydration products to form and now become like tennis balls, interact with one another. And this this interaction, this friction, this grabbing between these two surfaces is why our cement paste has strength. It's why our concrete has strength. And uh, that is Hydration Theater. Um, I appreciate you very much for attending. And uh, thanks a bunch.